folks, I made the first Agenda 21 film out there in 1997. It's called America Destroyed by Design, the UN plan to take over and bankrupt America and create a neo-feudalistic state. Read the back cover. And uh, guess whose information is in the film? Dr. Michael Kaufman. Guess who went to Congress? What was it, 94? They were about to sign on right as Bush had left office. He had, he, he had endorsed it. The Rio Summit Agenda 21. And, and, and a lot of times they can blindside you, and they would have got it all in right then. Boom. Congress saw the maps, checked with the U.N., half the country off limits. They said, no way, Jose. Put us under a U.N. treaty. So they went ahead and munialized, went after counties, cities, and states as an end run. Now Obama can't get Congress to pass shut down half the coal plants? Well, we're not calling for secession from America. The states have to pull out because the federal government's totally run by globalists. And we have to uh, get in there and we have to point out what's happened. And they're freaking out. They are freaking out right now at every level. And Aaron's going to come in here and pop in while Dr. Kaufman's on with us and show these articles saying, oh, my gosh, citizens are going and giving books and videos to their state reps and they're waking up and the states are saying no. Yeah, they're giving them Endgame. They're giving them Rosa Corey's book that we sell at Infowars.com. The film I made, the book I carry, and it's freaking them out because as soon as the state reps or county commissioners or mayors read this, they go, yeah, this is exactly what they are. Oh, yeah, that group that is here is UN. What? That's what this is? Wow, I'm not going to go along with this. They're pulling their hair out. So Dr. Michael Kaufman joins us because talk about a voice in the wilderness, sir. Great to, um, great to have you with us. Let me read some of your bio for folks that don't know who you are. He received his B.S. in forestry and M.S. in biology at Northern Arizona University at Flagstaff, Arizona, his Ph.D. in forest science University of Idaho at Moscow. He's taught courses and conducted research in forest ecology and uh, forest community dynamics at Michigan Technology University, a leading forestry school in the Midwest. He's author, researcher, filmmaker. He's currently president of Environmental Perspectives, Inc. He's written four books exposing the attack on our Constitution, personal liberties, uh, and the most recent being uh, Rescuing a Broken America. He has also uh, produced numerous videos. The most recent are of two of which, and it goes through it all. And that's www.epi.us.com. Uh, you can buy his book at americaplundered.com. And he joins us now. We'll also, I'll, I'll put up on screen some of the UN maps of what they want to do. And you're now seeing it all come in. They now know they're losing. So they're trying to enforce it all right now. We can use that to boomerang back. Uh, Dr. Kaufman, recap who you are, how you woke up, how you stopped this in the mid 90s, and where we are now. We can stop it again. Well, thank you, Alex. Glad to be back with you. Uh, let me just make one thing, uh, correct one thing that you said. My website is epi-us, I'm sorry, dash-us.com, epi-us.com, not epi.us.com. So without minor correction, basically back in the 19, early 1990s, I was leading a multi-million dollar research effort on global warming, uh, contacting and working with scientists all over the world. And it became pretty obvious to me that by 1992 that, well, actually in the early 1990s, that man probably wasn't causing global warming. We have now overwhelming evidence that man is not causing global warming. And that's why I think they're ramping up this uh, hype and scare story that we, you know, Hurricane Sandy was caused by uh, global warming and so forth. But nonetheless, at that particular point in time, I was also following what was going on in an organization called the IUC and the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Now, some of you probably know this because you've heard me before, but most of our international treaties are written by the IUC and the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. The Convention on Biological Diversity is one of those. And at the same time, there was another project called the Wildlands Project, which was basically also coming out of the United Nations. The Wildlands Project called for setting aside 50% of the United States into wilderness, as you suggested just a few minutes ago. And uh, the same people that were writing this, this particular project, the Wildlands Project, were also writing the Convention on Biological Diversity. And it didn't take a rocket scientist for me to realize that they're one and the same things. And when the, the treaty finally came out, 
all the language was there. It was really sanitized. You couldn't really see it. It sounded like motherhood and apple pie. But when the Global Biodiversity Assessment was published, it was actually written by the IUCN and the World Resources Institute. When that was published by the UN, it was basically referred back to the Wildlands Project and named the authors and so forth in doing that. I had been in August of 1994 down to the Senate trying to convince them that this was the Wildlands Project was at the heart of the convention or the treaty. Uh, they ignored me because it didn't say anything in the treaty about it. When the Global Biodiversity Assessment came out a month or two later, it was still in draft form. We didn't have the actual copy. That wasn't going to be published until the end of 1994. But we had the draft copy, and in it, it specifically said the Wildlands Project. It was a smoking gun. I had been doing, actually drawing maps for two years. I, I don't know why I was drawing them. I just really felt compelled by God to do it. I didn't have any idea why. Uh, it was a lot of work, but nonetheless, I did. And when that treaty, when the draft of the GPA came out, I sent it down, FedExed it down to the U.S. Senate, along with the map. There was actually a couple of us working on it at the time. And that map was blown up into a four by six foot poster taken out of the Senate floor at three o'clock in the afternoon. The, the closure vote was scheduled for four o'clock on September 29th. And it just literally died on the vine. Mitchell, Senator Mitchell, the majority leader at the time, just took it right off the executive calendar. It was never voted on. But that's how close we came to having this actually passed and ratified by the Senate. And as you said, very accurately, this now the marching orders of the U.S. government and every federal agency through a document called Sustainable America, which if you look it up on the internet, was written by Bill Clinton during his presidency, and his whole purpose is to implement Agenda 21 and every federal contract and grant and aid and all the rest is targeted towards Sustainable America and Agenda 21 is being implemented as we speak. And by the way, we've taken these to Agenda 21 meetings and smart growth conferences. And we've taken them to professors and they've said, yeah, this is, you can now look at this map 16, 17 years later, because that's what you have a degree in is, you know, putting these together. We've done it even for the Forest Service, I know, previously. And they go, yeah, no, that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's the corridors. Yes, this is, how did you get this? And we were at UT and they had similar maps. We were trying to videotape it. The professor let them in, but then somebody else came out and said, no, you can't tape that. But what's incredible is this, we now see where they're grabbing land. It's everywhere where you predicted. Yes. How did you put together, I guess that's what you, you're, you know, that, that's what you got all your training in, but how did you do it so accurately? Well, they actually came out with a set of instructions to how to do it with the Wildlands Project. And I took those instructions and I had actually done research and actually worked in most ecosystems in the United States by that time. And uh, I was able to, with my background and so forth and understanding of ecosystems, pretty much anticipate where they would put these reserves, these wilderness reserves and wilderness corridors. And it turns out that I'm about 80, 85% accurate. Uh, there's a little difference when you actually get down to what they're actually doing today, but not a whole lot. Yeah, you can look at the smart growth corridors they've set up, and it's they're also putting triangles and boxes around city groups yes. and trying to grab the property there. So now they're even targeting the green areas that originally they weren't going to try to take. That's correct. It's really a, an astonishing thing. They're doing it incrementally. If they had the treaty actually ratified back in 1994, they would have all the legal reasons necessary to condemn by eminent domain, all of your property, when it's in the way or it, where it's one of those chosen areas to be put in the wilderness, yank you off, destroy your home, and convert it back to wilderness. That would have allowed, that treaty would have allowed that to happen. Now they're having to do it incrementally. And they're still trying to do it. You know, the Sackett case up and up northern Idaho, I think you probably all have heard of that one. Is it not my king time to spring the trap? No, we must desecrate the soul and the flesh of the creator's creation. The chain of life broken forever. A monument to our beauty. 
missing one man since the Rio de Janeiro uh, UN takeover globally. The, 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 the declaration of usurpation, the, the, the declaration of war uh, against private property and against liberty for the general public by the mega rich uh, in 1992, it's Dr. Michael Kaufman, uh, PhD, uh, environmental scientist. And uh, there have been a lot of others that have fought it as well, Lord Moncton and many others myself. I, I've been fighting since 1996 against this. Uh, what's amazing, and I've got Aaron popping in here in about 15 minutes, is we're finding reports all over the country where they go, there's crazy people that think the UN's trying to run us. I mean, for 17 years, most of our national parks and monuments have been under UN control with huge buffer zones around them where people can't use their own property under UN Treaty, UNESCO. I mean, we're Obama is is signed a secret order, but the UN's bragging it's giving them the codes for the internet kill switch and the IP addresses. Uh, that's in mainstream news today. Uh, we've been told our military is under NATO and the UN. Ron Paul in his speech said we're under global government, but they still try this game where the Southern Poverty Law Center and others say they. St I get the training manuals cops get because they laugh and send them to me, and we you know we're laughing, but it's not funny. That they go, there's no such thing as the New World Order. The Federal Reserve is not private. There is no plan to implode the economy. There is no plan for, you know, this and that. When it's all happening on the news, how long can they get away with this? Or are they just trying to con those they know are ignorant, Dr. Kaufman? I think in many respects, they're conning those who are ignorant. And it's in some ways, I think the election that we just had a couple of weeks ago really clearly shows how ignorant this society truly is. It's not that people are dumb or stupid, they're not. But when you only get one side of the story with this whole terribly biased media, I mean, it's no longer the media, it's the media, it's the uh, Ministry of Propaganda for Obama. There's, there's no other way you can describe it. When you have a media that deliberately distorts the news and not tells you both sides of a story, you get an ignorant society that cannot ever act intelligently because they don't have the proper information. And we're, what we're seeing right now is that in spades, that's what really decided this election probably more than anything else, is almost 100 years of brainwashing in our public schools to produce a society basically that believes the government is a good thing, and it can be if it's got the right constraints on it. Uh, and the fact that socialism is something to be desired rather than, than avoided. All of the things that uh, you and I and others have talked about on your show over the years that has really degraded their ability for critical thinking and, and therefore uh, ability to make right decisions. Dr. Cobbin, you've hit the heart of it here. I, I, when I watch MSNBC to monitor what they're up to, they're trying to create racial division, all the rest of it. They giggle and snicker most of the time in a self-admiration society about how smart they are, but how dumb all of us are. But I understand now that's because they're preying on people. I've run into these folks. These are predators. I mean, they don't believe anything they're saying. They know it's a fraud. But for those of us that are informed, who aren't evil, it's horrifying people are so dumbed down. But, but, but the system revels in the fact that, that it's, it's like two different species. People that are informed versus dumbed down idiots who aren't even so much dumb. They're, you know, they're, they just don't even know how to think. They have no gauge on even what's happening. How do you deal with something like that when you've got people that literally you know, couldn't work at McDonald's now voting to, to, to try to take our guns? You know, it's a, it's a really good question, and that's something I've been hitting my wall, head against the wall for quite a few years, and I know you have too. How do you come across to these people who don't have the basic understanding to even begin to understand what you're talking about? It takes many, many hours to even pr make a presentation of what a constitutional republic should be and why it's so critically important. And they just, they have no clue. They have no clue to even begin to understand what you're talking about. And I don't know how to come up, how to really change that unless you really show how this is destroying us. And this is what I've been trying to do uh, with my new book, Plundered, uh, how the progressive ideology is destroying America. It basically goes into the progressive ideology back a hundred and over a hundred years, 125 years and shows you how nothing has changed in that period of time. How psychiatrists of the early days in the 1800s were calling these progressives nuts 
because they cannot connect to reality. And they're still the same, exactly the same. Uh, uh, and really what they are is they're social failures that get together yes. in gangs. I haven't read your book, but I know what it's going to be about because I know we're on the same page. I'm going to carry it, by the way. I want to read it first, but people should get at your site. But, but let's talk about their psychology because they're gangs of like wimps. But I don't mean physically wimpy. I mean, these are mentally ill people. But they form like these swarms of locusts that are smart enough to be able to blacken the earth and eat the flesh off our economy's bones. Protection Agency, uh, a court has ruled that they're above the law and that they must investigate themselves. But the Office of Inspector General has begun an investigation of the EPA uh, pumping deadly gases in on people without them knowing it. <laughs> Just another ongoing, potentially lethal experiment government's doing on you. This is a group of uh, insane, inbred eugenicists. There was a breeding program by the Darwin family, the Huxleys, the Wedgwoods. Uh, and two other families, we cover it in Endgame, that produced near 90% retardation or stillborn. There was about 5 6% that were highly intelligent, even above their genius families, but also generally uh, raving psychotics. Uh, Aldous Huxley was one of the few survivors. His brother Julian Huxley started the UN UNESCO program that runs all this today. Uh, they were talking about the Plan Society back in 1932 when he wrote Brave New World. What he said was their real theoretized plan that was adopted by the British royalty, the Dutch royalty. You know about the Nazis and the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. So you got a bunch of really smart scientists who were control freaks who interbreed. They create this monster plan. It gets adopted because the robber barons in the U.S. liked it too. Rockefellers, Rothschilds, they all funded it. Go look it up. They funded the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. The, Rothschild, the Rockefellers did. And it created this nightmare. And, and, and Dr. Cotton, in his deep research, get into different angles of this, but uh, he covers in the end game extras, you know, university plans. He shows the documents where they said in the 60s, we'll put drugs on the street and get everybody on drugs. We'll use entertainment just to get people in this mind-numbed area. And then once you're mind-numbed, then they can start the soft kill culling. So see, everybody needs to understand, just all this decadence and welfare is not going to keep going on. They're just breaking you and making you a bunch of pathetic jellyfish. Why is their number one enemy the returning veterans in the Homeland Security training documents? If you're a new listener, just type in Homeland Security says number one terror threat veterans. You'll get AP, Reuters, you know, Washington Times. We, we broke that when a federal marshal and state police gave me a separate document uh, out of Missouri. But the point is that, that, that they say that, they, that the veterans are who they're going to round up. So while you're out there saluting at veterans parades, remember, our, our government's now run by globalists. Dr. Cobbman, finish up with the mindset of these people from your research. And then I want to talk about the fact that I know in the Declaration of Independence we have the power to secede, but not to, we could create a new union or a new country, but I say secede from the occupied federal government to get their attention and then kick them out. You know, the globalists, the Federal Reserve, and reconstitute it. Just that process of the states beginning this will create the moral high ground and will create a fulcrum or focus bases to then launch out. Because we're under an attack. We, no more half measures. We either go all the way whole hog and call this out like Ron Paul did two days ago in his farewell, or it's over. Because they are bum-rushing us. We, we are under a Tet offensive right now. They are overrunning us. And, and, and we've got a zombified public. A lot of us are awake, but it's 20, 30% of us are awake. Then you got the zombies. And then of the 20, 30% we've got, they're going, oh, I'm glad Ron Paul or Dr. Kaufman's there. No, we need you to get involved. But, but finish up with their mindset and then ideas you've got to try to just beat these people. Well, you know, it's one of the things that uh, I really was, went into a state of shock over when I got a hold of some of these early reports and books and so forth of psychiatrists. Now, psychiatry was just a beginning to take hold back in the 1800s. That's their priesthood. Yeah, well, it is. But 
these psychiatrists were real psychiatrists. There are still some today, uh, although most of them are out in the in the twilight zone. Sure. They, what what they found was basically, and he described it to a T. He described the modern day progressive that's in Congress, that's in our our uh, court systems, that are in our educational systems. All of these things are described to a T in the 1800s. How they literally cannot connect reality. <clears throat> there, excuse me, quite a few cards short of a full deck, and because of that, they have these utopian concepts that will never ever work. And that's sure, sure, and and and. Uh I've read some of that. They just are obsessed control freaks. And the reason those psychiatrists wrote books about it was because they were working next to the communist uh, or, or the proto-communist uh, psychiatrist. Yes. Well, they could see it. I mean, it was very definitely very obvious. And it's what led to the socialism, socialist Europe that we have today, communism. All of these things are derived from that particular phenomenon back in the 1800s. Uh, really goes back to Jean-Jacques Rousseau. but Nonetheless, uh, by the time the French Revolution was over and so forth, it was pretty well uh, in the in the in died in contact and the concrete. It's government by psychopathic authoritarians, as Ron yes. Paul has dubbed them. Yeah, it really is, and it's, you're not being over exaggeration when you say that either, because they really now a lot of these people know exactly what they're doing. Uh, Obama, for instance, knows exactly what he's doing. He's lying. Uh, basically, he has no problem at all. He's a socio sociopath. He's a he basically is a pathological liar, and he just rolls right off his tongue. I mean, we saw time after time after time in the debates uh, where he would be stand up there in absolute truth and defy anyone to deny him when we know for absolute fact that he was totally wrong and that he was actually, uh, you know, for instance, energy. Energy, he has tried everything he can to stop. He said, I will bankrupt coal. And then yep. he gets up in there and says, I never said that. And we can play the video clip right now. I know. It's, it's, it's just astonishing how he can do that time after time. Benghazi, another classic example, his, his interview or his press conference. He said, he, said, I, he said, I said it was terrorism day one. And when he didn't, I mean, it's all now come out that Petraeus was given talking points by the White House and said, do not say it's terrorism. But we saw his ambassador all over the news saying that. No, yes. that's what I'm saying. It, it's it's like, but but the thing is, they know, they're they trying to give the general public the, a mass mental illness. Because once you get the public to accept lies, it fouls the brain electrochemical computer, as you know, where, where then people just lose track of everything. They do. And everything is based on emotion. This is the critical thing, I think, more than anything else, is that they base all their decisions on emotion. And emotion, if you continue to follow your emotions, you're going to fall off a cliff. And we are falling off a cliff now because we are in no neverland. Uh, we cannot continue to sustain the the types of, of deficits. Oh, I mean, we're being maneuvered into bankruptcy, as the globalists said. But, but, but expanding on that, I run into this all the time. People call in and they go, you don't like Obama, you're a racist. And I, and I talk to them. These are real people. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not saying Romney's good either, but Obama oh. is going to accelerate the program. Collectivism's horrible. Socialism doesn't work. Communism doesn't work. And he's taking our liberties. And they just go, no, you're a racist. And, and it's like, a, and then they giggle like they know political correctness is a weapon. It doesn't matter even if they know it's not true. It makes them feel like they have social oh. status. Yes, it makes them, and they notice this back in the 1800s. It makes them feel powerful, and they're they're sick. They just they should not be in any elected position. They should not be in any educational position, any judicial uh, place, and yet they dominate those particular pillars of our society. And we are in a heap of trouble. And what I don't understand, and just it my boggles my mind, Europe is collapsing. Now, not much is shown on the evening news. I go into the great detail in the book uh, Plundered. But not much is shown on the evening news, but Europe is doomed. There is really oh, no... The, I think they had something like 50 fires yesterday and rioting yes. everywhere, just right. all over Europe, just bedlam. Yes, it, it is horrible. And that's the result. It's always the result. There is no case in history. Yeah, no, this is Jacobin French Revolution Illuminati crap. It is. It really is. And as soon as you understand that, 
you understand why communism... Well, listen, I've got to read Plundered, because I've read your other books, so send us a copy. You probably did. I'm going to get Weldon to carry it in the store, because because it's so amazing that I haven't even read your book, but I know it's going to be in it, because it's history. But, yes. I, but, but, but I always learn something new and refresh my memory. But when you discover that communism is Jacobin devil worship, yes. I mean, and, and it's in mainline history books. It's French devil worshipers, German devil worshipers, that have that uh, that that wanted to go to a nine day week, no family. They were going to destroy language. They were going to go back to the wilds, and, and it just turned out they were a bunch of, of psychopaths. They really were the Jacobians, and, and uh, during the French Revolution, the horror. I mean, we think that World War One and World War Two were horrible, and they were. I I don't want to diminish that, but the French Revolution was inhuman, literally inhuman. Not as many people were killed, but how they were killed was inhuman. Pulling them apart with horses, uh, anybody that disagreed with you, I mean, it was absolutely... Oh, giant hordes of, 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 of Illuminati, that, that's mainline history, yes. folks, running yes. around, raping, killing, burning cities, just foaming it, and, and, and then the more and more evil would get in control, and it just ran rampant until Napoleon came in. And, tell them, and then you had a totalitarian dictator. Which was the plan all along. Yeah, I think it really was. And I think that's what we're seeing now with Obama. I don't, I don't know how else you can explain it because he is going to take us right over the cliff and basically create chaos. And out of chaos will come a, to, a, to, a, a tyrant. Let me ask you this, and we're going to go to Aaron Dykes here and keep you to the end of the show and then do a little bit of overdrive for callers that are holding. Dr. Michael Coppins, our guest. But people need to get your book. I mean, I'm not just saying this. I'm actually foaming at the mouth to get it uh, plundered. Uh, tell folks the best place to get it. Right now we have it at, so you can get it on Amazon, but you can also get it at our website. And if you do on our website, uh, it's on americaplundered.com, americaplundered.com. If you order from there, we will give we'll not only give you a thirty percent discount, but we'll also give you a free copy of Saviors of My Earth, of the Earth, one of my first books that led to the actual stopping of the Convention on Biological Diversity. And that's the good news. We can stop this. I want to bring Aaron Dykes in and then get your take on it. Aaron, one of our researchers, literally hundreds of articles, newscasts, where they're saying now. There is no such thing as Agenda 21, even though they officially have their operatives, and they're demonizing people, and they're panicking, as you saw in the New York Times, Dr. Kaufman. Uh, 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 Aaron, um, break down these articles for folks, and we'll show people a document cam shot. Yeah, first, I just want to thank Dr. Kaufman and all the people who've been behind this issue for decades, people like Merkla, who brought Prop 37 to the forefront, everybody who's out there working, and now it's all these activists approaching their state representatives, their state governments, and actually getting them to have meetings, and the system's freaking out. Uh, there's this whole flame war in Georgia, and, and it's the exact stuff you're talking about with the secession movement, with the states' rights movement. The Agenda 21 stuff just overlays with that, and they're all upset because a Tea Party activist who got kicked out of his Tea Party group for spreading Alex Jones and uh, InfoWars information got a meeting with the Senate Majority Leader Chip Rogers, and now they're saying the video from that is exposed where he's talking about Agenda 21 being a big problem, and they're and they're trying to hoax it that ooh look we we found a video of the of the congressman or the state rep being bad like ooh he talked about poo poo I mean I hate to talk like that but that's what it's like oh my gosh racism oh no it's exactly what you're talking about obviously your comments yesterday about secession were not in a vacuum it's oh it's Georgia so it's the deep south it's racist it's conspiracy kooks it's Alex Jones talk and they're mad because they invited the whole Republican caucus. And a lot of them actually went. <laughs> and this is no, 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 the, because the because they've got their UN paid operatives. We can go in and show them the article with all the video links in a 20 minute meeting with one of these guys. Here's Herman von Rumpy, head of the EU. Here's the head of the ECB. They say they've conquered us. Here they are on CNBC. Here's the documents. Here's the plan. And you win because it's over. It's over when we expose them. Show well, them. They, they've ruined themselves. They're doing that Media Matters plan where they say, oh, it's associated with Alex Jones. It's kooky. It's conspiracy. It ain't going to work. People are finding out about this issue. It's in the Marietta Daily Journal. That's a local Georgia paper. It's in the Atlanta TV 
station 11. This is why we're going to beat them, because they still think they control reality with their fraud, like Karl Rove said. Not anymore. Everyone hates them so much that the minute they demonize us, they all come right to us. Yeah, it's not going to work. You've got the Atlanta news station saying global control theorists meet with Georgia GOP leaders. and Global control theorists. You notice these insiders were telling Ron Paul, don't talk about New World Order. He just kicked all them out, and now he goes and gives a speech and says world government's conquered us. He said world government has taken over America. That is the end. That is cyanide to these no, people. That's what they show in the news piece. They show world government control, and then they say, if you like environmentalism, you might be part of the problem. That's according to these Tea Party activists and the GOP in Georgia. And they make a big, like, make it fun of them, conspiracy. Let's get Cogman's quick take on this, and then we'll continue with a stack of articles. But, Doc, it isn't working anymore. I mean, I mean, real environmentalists know that this is just taking control of their movement for eugenics uh, and trying to tax carbon dioxide that plants breathe instead of doing real environmentalism. I think the majority of people, maybe a small majority at this point, are beginning to start to see through it. And basically, it goes back and again to the 1800s. The only way they can win is by demonizing their opposition. This has been done uh, decade after decade after decade. And now, because of the Internet and because of programs like yours and so forth, is being exposed and people are saying, wait a minute. You know, I think Benghazi is a classic example. Anybody who watches Fox News, and I'm not a real strong supporter of Fox News, but at least they're trying to cover the issue, uh, realizes that the whole thing was a was a cover up right from the beginning. It's Obama stood down while that guy got killed over seven yeah. hours, and they had a CIA base down the street full of troops. Why didn't they kill him? Look, exactly. they were running that Al Qaeda group. That was the head of security. Right. Uh, it's clear, Obama. And I've talked to top military off record. I've talked to Colonel. Uh, Schaefer on air, and he he can well off air. He's like, no, that's what's going on. Well, I'm not going to get into it. The point is, th it's an Obama hit on that guy. Yeah, it is. It's really, and same with Petraeus and so forth. Uh, now Petraeus did what he did and and deserves what he got, but nonetheless, no, no, no. He was mad about the stand down, and that's why they've relieved five generals now. Right, I I totally agree. It's all political. It's all vindictive. There hasn't been a single decision by this administration that wasn't political in its nature. Not a single one. Not any that would help or We're going to finish up with that in a moment. Finish up with your articles, Aaron. We're going to go to break, but, but show folks some of the other articles you've got here. Yeah, I mean, it's just interesting. They've got stuff we talked about in our InfoWars reports on Agenda 21 on the Delphi technique, how they use that to sell you on your own enslavement, and it is all about control. Uh, and Mother Jones and others are admitting they're using it to brainwash us. headline. It says, Top Georgia GOP lawmakers host briefing on secret Obama mind control plot, and they've got the mind control graphic and yet it all But we've been to the meetings. Was... They admit they're using it. Oh, yeah. And when we went to the meetings, uh, the little minders let us know. They've been watching our videos, and they've been reading up on our points, too. They've got secession and conspiracy theories about mind control and domestic watch lists. And they're trying to tie together Florida and Georgia secession with the Agenda 21 thing, acting again like it's... No, no, no. If you don't want the U.N. coming in and taking over, you're a secessionist. No, they're acting like it's a Civil War thing when all 50 states are saying, let's get out of this federal, you know, all this stuff. No, no, that's how they sell liberals. You don't want to be a stupid toothless white person from, from the South, a scum. I mean, I love how on TV they attack people from the South. I mean, I, I mean, it's absolutely bigoted, and I'm sick of it. Dr. Michael Kaufman is our guest. Final segment with him. Some phone calls coming up. As we saw in Katrina, and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. The InfoWars Shop is the largest distributor of ProPure water filter systems. And now, get 15% off your ProPure order with the promo code WATER15. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order strategic relocations the film.
a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations 3rd Edition and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com and don't forget the promo code WATER15. The globalists write all these books we've sourced where they talk about how they want to reduce our population and how they want to dumb us down. And then all these idiot collectivists who've been raised to trust the television and the government, you just feel sorry for them. You can't even get mad at them. By the way, we do have plundered. And it's funny, Weldon was already working on carrying it, so we've already got a deal with them. We're going to put it up in the store today, so you can also order plundered uh, at InfoWarsShop.com and support all of our work. Uh, Doc, uh, you know, I've launched this whole move to try to get the states to really stand up against the feds. The article is up at InfoWars.com, why the states must secede to save America. And I lay out my reasons for it there. I have a video there. I have Ron Paul agreeing that uh, secession is as American as George Washington and apple pie. And I've had his advisors on the last day. Um, Bruce Fine, his, his top advisor from the campaign on policy, is on Monday. Uh, had Edwin Vieira on, but they agree this is the move as the bully pulpit. A and that the key to this is what you've exposed. It's a globalist corporate takeover through the UN, the mega banks created, the Rockefellers created on record. And this is how they're taking us over. And they're now saying we're treasonous if we don't want to go under UN. I mean, here it is. UN to seek internet kill switch next month document show. And that's what Obama's secret order is doing, is handing them the codes to the... Um, to the DNS registry. I mean, we're going under this and we've got to say no. They hope to just push this in because we're designed to face a military attack, not a corporate sabotage takeover. What do you say in closing on that, sir? Absolutely. I totally agree with you. I don't, you're cutting in and out, and I hope I'm not doing that on your end. But it's absolutely essential that we begin to say no. The secessionist movement that's gone on the last few days, I think, is absolutely astounding and really exciting. However, remember that we really need to get our economy at the state level in shape before we can succeed, because a lot of states, and I'm in Maine, and we're one of them. I had the chance to talk to the governor. He says we cannot survive without federal head right now. We're trying to get out from underneath that, but if we were to succeed right now, we would go under financially. And as, and I know a lot of states are like that. So it's it's got to be a dual effort. We've got to sure, establish. Sure, sure. I'm saying people. use the states beginning the meetings and the legislatures pointing out that the UN's taken over. That's what they're afraid of. See, I don't just know this historically. Their entire battle plan is based around stopping us exposing it's a foreign takeover and demonizing secession. That's because they know that's their Achilles heel. Absolutely, I agree. And let me tell you, folks, I've been working on this since the late 1980s. Agenda 21 is real. Sustainable America is real. You can find it on the Internet. You beat uh, uh, on the U.N. site. You beat it in the mid-1990s in Congress. We're going to beat it again. God bless you, sir. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs> Michigan Technology University, a leading forestry school in the Midwest. He's author, researcher, filmmaker. He's currently president of Environmental Perspectives, Inc. He's written four books exposing the attack on our Constitution, personal liberties, uh, and the most recent being uh, Rescuing a Broken America. He has also uh, produced numerous videos, the most recent are of two of which, and it goes through it all. And that's www.epi.us.com. Uh, and you can buy his book at americaplunder.com. And he joins us now. We'll also, I'll, I'll put up on screen some of the UN maps of what they want to do. And you're now seeing it all come in. They now know they're losing, so they're trying to enforce it all right now. We can use that to boomerang back. Uh, Dr. Kaufman, recap who you are, how you woke up, how you stopped this in the mid-90s, and where we are now, we can stop it again. Yeah, they're giving them Endgame. They're giving them Rosa Corey's book that we sell at Infowars.com. The film I made, the book I carry, and it's freaking them out because as soon as the state reps or county commissioners or mayors 
read this, they go, yeah, this is exactly what they are. Oh, yeah, that group that is here is UN. What? That's what this is? Wow, I'm not going to go along with this. They're pulling their hair out. So Dr. Michael Kaufman joins us because talk about a voice in the wilderness, sir. Great to, um, great to have you with us. Let me read some of your bio for folks that don't know who you are. He received his B.S. in forestry and M.S. in biology at Northern Arizona University at Flagstaff, Arizona, his Ph.D. in forest science University of Idaho at Moscow. He's taught courses and conducted research in forest ecology and uh, forest community dynamics at Michigan. Well, thank you, Alex. Glad to be back with you. Uh, let me just make one thing, uh, correct one thing that you said. My website is epi-us. I'm sorry dash us.com epi dash us.com not epi dot us.com so with that minor correction basically back in the 19 early 1990s i was leading a multi-million dollar research effort on global warming uh contacting and working with scientists all over the world and it became pretty obvious to me that by 1992 that well actually in the early 1990s that man probably wasn't causing global warming we have now overwhelming evidence that man is not causing global warming and that's why i think they're ramping up this uh, hype and scare story that we you know boom congress saw the maps checked with the u.n half the country off limits they said no way jose put us under a u.n treaty so they went ahead and munulized went after county cities and states as an end run now obama can't get congress to pass shut down half the coal plants well we're not calling for secession from America. The states have to pull out because the federal government's totally run by globalists. And we have to uh, get in there and we have to point out what's happened. And they're freaking out. They are freaking out right now at every level. And Aaron's going to come in here and pop in while Dr. Kopman's on with us and show these articles saying, oh my gosh, citizens are going and giving books and videos to their state reps and they're waking up and the states are saying no. Folks, I made the first Agenda 21 film out there in 1997. It's called America Destroyed by Design, the UN plan to take over and bankrupt America and create a neo-feudalistic state. Read the back cover. And uh, guess whose information is in the film? Dr. Michael Kaufman. Guess who went to Congress? What was it, 94? They were about to sign on. Right as Bush had left office, he had, he, he had endorsed it. The Rio Summit Agenda 21 and, and, and a lot of times they can blindside you, and they would have got it all in right then. 